hiring of Inspector General Gerald Walpin, uh, who the White House claims is hey, he's confused, disoriented, unable to answer questions. He's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, have you had that feeling from him at all? Last night, I put him through a, an official state mini mental exam to check him out. He's fine. Believe me, the only thing that is wrong with Gerald Walpin is that his heart hurts from being thrown under the bus by a system in this country that he has served so long. Nobody in Washington seems to get this. Nobody in the media really seems to understand, I think, where we're headed. We are headed, we're headed to a place where um, we're going to be a nation of bullies. A nation of bullies. Gerald Walpin is, he's Superman. And let me explain a personal story about my grandfather. My grandfather, uh, Edward Lee Jansen, he was, he was my hero. He was Santa Claus. Um, he, was a, he was a sheriff. That's not him. That's me. Why do we have the fat picture of me? Um, he, was a, he was a vet, you know. He even punched a horse when it needed to go down. He was a strong man. And he didn't have any, you know, he didn't have any medication to put the horse down, so he punched him in the face. I mean, this guy was Superman to me. When I was 14 years old, my family took the keys of, uh, of uh, his truck away from him because he, well, he was going to get a cup of coffee and he drove the truck through a window, window at Sambo's. Uh, three weeks later, he started uh, driving his tractor to Sambo's, took the tractor keys away. Finally, when Grandpa was caught on the side of the road with the lawnmower driving into town, we had some issues. I remember at about 14, uh, there was a day that Grandpa went to the hospital and I never saw him again. My family thought it was best that I didn't see him in the state, so I never went to the hospital. They thought it was best that I remembered him for the man he was, not the man he had slipped into. I wanted to remember the superhero, and while well, I'm still kind of torn whether or not that was a good idea, that is the guy I remember. Well, Gerald Walpin is somebody Superman as well. He is living proof of the American dream. This guy grew up in the Bronx. He was so poor that his parents didn't eat dinner so that he could. They'd avoid answering the doorbell because it might be the gas man coming to collect money. Even though he worked hard enough to get into Harvard, he wasn't able to uh, uh, pay for it. But he didn't let the dream die. He wanted to be a litigator, so he went and took massive loans on. He even got a scholarship, and he ended up at Yale Law. He graduated in 1955. He's been a superman to Sheila, his wife. 52 years they've been married. She tells me she still remembers their first date. It was a... Uh, it was a double blind date, and Gerald took her to a cheap restaurant because it was all he could afford. They were married less than a year later. Gerald Walpin. He's a superman also to his three children, Amanda, Edward, and Jennifer. Uh, they know Dad as a first lieutenant in JAG. He was a special U.S. prosecutor who took on the longest criminal jury case at the time. He was a pit bull who went after conservative Roy Cohn. He, was, uh, the, the, uh, he had the uh, infamous uh, counsel uh, uh, on the, um, as an aide to Senator Joseph McCarthy. They know him as an attorney who helped to indict Nixon's top two cabinet members and who represented Mia Farrow against Woody Allen. They know him as a great dad, taking him on trips all over the world. They went to Russia, they went to uh, Turkey and Afghanistan, everywhere in between. Gerald Walton made such an impression on his children that when the youngest one graduated from college, she could have asked for anything she wanted. She just said, Dad, will you take us and the family on one of those vacations again? Gerald Walpin, he has done amazing things for his children, his six grandchildren, and his country. He is not a crazy man. He has not gone senile. But none of that matters. Our government will destroy whoever they have to destroy to get their own way. They'll tell you any lie. They, you can't fight as a regular person. You can't fight the machine. And they know it. Unless we start seeing people as people again. They're tearing down this distinguished man by claiming that he's like my grandpa, driving along the side of the road with his lawnmower. He's not. When the government's thirst for power and money would drive them to destroy a man like my grandpa or your grandpa or your dad or Gerald Walpin, who's next? 
You ever heard the old poem, first they came for the Jews? Well, first they came for the, first they came for the banks, then it was the insurance companies, then it was the car companies, and then it was Gerald Walpin. Who's next? Last night I, I asked Gerald, I said, you think you're going to win? He told me no. Then why are you doing it? He told me because I couldn't live with myself if I didn't. To his wife, to his children, to his family, Gerald Walpin is more of a hero now than he has ever been because he is doing the one thing that so many others are afraid to. He is standing against those who apparently, some way or another, can make this planet spin in the wrong direction. Of course, Walpin, you could say, Gee, Glenn, you're making an awful lot of big deal out of this one guy. Really? Let's look back. Is it just this one guy, or is he just the latest example in a long line of people who have been destroyed by our government? I can only say that uh, I became a thorn in the side of someone you know, because I was doing my job and I was fired for doing my job. It's one awkward moment for Sarah Palin at the Yankee game. During the seventh inning, her daughter was knocked up by Alex Rodriguez. If the government al allows this to happen and says, it's a Lehman Brothers situation and we're going to let you go, what do you do with that? No, we're going to keep, we're going to keep driving ahead to fix the company. My parents have owned a General Motors dealership in Anoka, Minnesota for 90 years, and they were terminated last week, and they would like to know why. They would like to know why from the car czar. I'm getting ready to buy a company that makes 200, about $250,000, $270,000, $80,000 a year. Uh, your new tax plan is going to tax me more. The economy is good for folks from the bottom up. It's going to be good for everybody. The Obama campaign had its supporters confront WGN radio in Chicago last week for having a critic of the Democratic presidential nominee on its air. The Chicago Tribune reports Obama supporters besieged the station with thousands of phone calls and emails in an effort to force the cancellation of an interview with columnist Stanley Kurtz. Producer at WGN radio said, quote, I got the feeling they were trying to intimidate us. We have never been just a collection of individuals or a collection of red states and blue states. We are and always will be the United States of America. America, you gotta wake up and you gotta stand up. I, I, I want to show something else to you um, that I've never even, I, I, I heard this about, I don't know, 40 minutes ago and I couldn't take it anymore. It was um, uh, from Chris Dodd. Chris Dodd, they're trying to pass this health care thing, and they're just going to jam it down our throats. And um, the, the, uh, the CBO, which is bipartisan, it is the Congressional Budget Office. This is their people. We always use, and they're never right. They're always, they're always way too low. Okay, so what happens? They're going to do this health care thing. One, uh, one estimate from the CBO puts it at $1 trillion in debt. The other estimate is $1.6 trillion in debt. So, play the role. This, this is Chris Dodd today. Watch this. This is not Mount Olympus, uh, the CBO. Uh, their, their numbers are helpful, but I'm not going to write a bill only because it has to pass some unnamed people down at CBO. Uh, others may decide that's the end all. I don't. But the idea that, we're gonna, that everything gets deferred to CBO or give them the power to cancel ideas in our bill I've never heard of that idea before being raised on a legitimate and important piece of legislation like this. Unbelievable. I, I can't take these people anymore. i got to tell you, this is, out, this is out of control. First of all, he's saying, well, we're going to give some unnamed people some power to cancel things. What the hell are you doing with the car companies? What are you doing with all the companies? You just want some unnamed people, some administrators who's taking over companies if you think that they might hurt us. It's, it's, it's incomprehensible. By the way, let me ask you this, Senator Dodd. If these guys stink so much, why don't you fire them? They work for you. We'd like to save the money. You know what they're going to do? They're going to take this health care proposal and they're going to run it through the Office of Budget Management. Hmm, who do those people work for? Oh, that's the president's 
budget office. The one that told us that we would never go over 8% unemployment if we passed the stimulus package. That would never happen. Those people are going to come up. You watch. You watch. They will come up and the number will no longer be a trillion dollars. 1.6? No. It's going to be savings. You watch.